hearts began believing Redemption's bid is unrelenting Your love goes on Your love goes on To carry us, carry us Shadows, you give the world the light to follow. A hope that shines beyond tomorrow. Your love goes on, your love goes on. Online. My name is Pastor Kimo. I'm the lead pastor here at NextGen. Uh, this is for the week of October 13th. We're so glad that you decided to join us tonight. A couple of things that we want to let you know. Um, one, this is live, so there's probably going to be some notes and some stuff that won't be in sync. So if you could just give a little grace towards that, um, that would be great. The other thing that we want to let you know is that if you want to sing along with us, uh, you can go to our website, which is nextgenh.com, N-E-X-T-G-E-N-N-H.com, and there you'll see a button that says lyrics, and you can click on that, and you can download all the music uh, for tonight, so that way you can sing along with us. 
Um, another announcement that we want to let you know is that there's going to be an opportunity for you to give. Also at nextgennh.com, you'll find a button there that you can click on uh, for giving when that time comes. And we want to we want to let you know that uh, the giving portion is for those who call NextGen their home, so uh, or for guests who who want to support this ministry. So there's absolutely no obligation to give. Um, and there's no amount that's too small, none that's too great. So please just give from your heart, and, uh, and that'd be awesome, because it'll feed me and my family. <laughs> anyway, uh, what else is there? Um, we're going to be doing this again next week, probably. Uh, so what you want to do is, if, if you want to get a heads up for what's happening, just go to our website, and on the what's, what's happening, uh, I think it's something like events uh, button, you can click on, and it'll let you know what the format is going to be for the following week, if we're going to be at, at a location, if we're going to be online. But for now, right now, we're going to be online. So with that being said, I think that's all of the announcements. We're going to jump right back into worship. God bless you. And I'm going to give you a couple seconds to pull up the first song. Uh, actually, this would be song number two. All right.
you will go You never leave me When I'm lost There's always hope Every high and every low You're standing next to me In the fire There's always hope I will live by Cry out to a lie, a lie With a phantom we raise up our voice Proclaim you're a lie, a lie Your love keeps chasing me Indeed I always feel, indeed I always feel Your grace keeps changing me Indeed I always feel, indeed I always feel In my joy and in my pain You're right beside me In your arms is always hope When I fall, you are there your Mercy will catch me On my hope in Christ alone
The chasm is far too wide I never thought I'd reach the other side But your love never fails You stay the same Father, now as it's time for us to take our offerings, I pray that you would bless us, that you bless those who are giving, that you would help this funds to continue to, to allow this ministry to do your work. And God, I just pray that even though we don't know what's going to be happening in, in this future, Father, we know that you love us and we know that your plan is perfect and that your timing is perfect. So Father, we, we completely give that to you and we place our hope and all of our trust in you. In your name, amen. Crown him with me. Crown him the Lord of 
start today by uh, making an observation. I have come to the conclusion that no attribution, attribute of God is so widely believed as the love of God. Take a micro microphone to the streets of Boston and start asking people what are the characteristics of God. I guarantee that most of them will say love somewhere in their conversation. I will assert without fear of contradiction that the word love will be mentioned more than any other word. Because people who never go to church, never read their Bibles, are aware that God is love. They may not fully believe it, but they have heard it so many times that when they think of God, they think of his love. Now, just because they've heard of his love, however, does not mean they have the remotest idea or understanding of it. Even with firsthand experience of God's love, it is impossible to truly understand its depths, its extent, or its power. J.I. Packer uses a wonderful image to speak of God's love. It goes something like this. When we study God's wisdom, we learn about his mind. When we study God's power, we learn about his arm. 
When we study God's knowledge, we learn about his eyes. When we study God's word, we learn about his mouth. But when we study God's love, we learn of his heart. Some people mistakenly believe that God's love somehow cancels out his holiness. Unbelievers often think this, but many people have the idea that when they reach the gates of heaven, God will smile and say, you know what, you don't deserve it, but ah, come on in. Unfortunately, this is not the truth. Whenever we think of God as some kind of glorified Father Christmas with a huge lap for everyone and everything, we forget that holiness is in the very DNA, the very nature of who God is. And he will never contradict his own nature. So getting to know God, really know him requires intimacy. It requires an intimate knowledge of his heart. And to do this, we must tread on holy ground. And to do that, we need the grace of reverence that we may tread without sin. Something we cannot do on our own. You know, to help us understand this, I pose the question, what does it look like for sinful man to come into direct contact with the holiness of God? Now, as an example, I want you to, to think about a really famous movie, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of Lost Ark. Indiana Jones is one of my favorite movie ser <laughs> series. And in this particular story, Raiders of the Lost Ark, he is searching for the Ark of the Covenant along with some bad Nazis who want to use it as a weapon against all the world, right? Well, the Ark of the Covenant, what is that? If you've never seen the movie or if you, ne you don't know your Old Testament really well, that's fine. The Ark of the Covenant is uh, a box, ornately decorated, but what's important about this box was that the presence of God, a piece of his Shekinah glory, a piece of who he was, was placed inside of this box so that the Israelites could be close to God. The Israelites were God's people. Now, there were very strict rules in the Old Testament placed on how the box was supposed to be put behind this really thick curtain and how no one was to ever come in direct contact with it and that only the priests were ever to be able to put it on poles and carry it around. And, and in this movie, the, the, the Nazis find the Ark of the Covenant and they're going to use it as a weapon. And in the end, all the enemies get destroyed. And it's not because of some brilliance of uh, Indiana Jones, you know, some great move with his whip or something. It wasn't because of a massive bomb. What killed every single one of the enemies was the fact that they opened the box and the power of God, the glory of God, the Shekinah of glory just burst forth like an atomic bomb and just annihilated everything in its path. Now, this, this little bit of fiction from <laughs> um, Hollywood actually comes from truth. In, the, in Scripture, it talks a little bit about what the Shekinah glory of God was like. And we hear, hear about that in the story of Isaiah. This story can be found in 2 Samuel 6, 1 through 7, and 1 Chronicles 13, 9 through 12. The king of Israel at that time was David. He wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant into the city. And they decided to do this by putting it on the back of a new cart pulled by oxen. Well, that was not the way God had instructed the Ark of the Covenant to be carried. But they did it anyway. And as they are going forth towards the city with the Ark of the Covenant, it started to topple. And Isaiah, who was a Levite, he was um, trained to be a priest, reached up his hands to steady the Ark of the Covenant. But as soon as this sinful man's person came into contact with the Shekinah glory, the holiness, the, the power of God, intimacy, that intimateness of touch struck him dead. Man, sinful man, and holy, holy God cannot coexist in the same space because of sin. Now, what is God's answer to this? You know, intimacy with God is something that he desires us to have. But is it an utter, it is an utter impossibility on man's terms or attempts. And God's answer is Jesus. He sent his only son to die on the cross to pay the wages of our sin, to bridge the gap between 
our sinfulness, our dirty rags, and his glory, his holiness, so that we could have, that, that the slate could be wiped clean and we could have intimacy with God. And it is all through the gift of Jesus living here on earth and dying on the cross for our sins. You know, perhaps the central passage in the New Testament on God's love is Romans 5, 6 through 8. Here Paul focuses on the death of Christ as the supreme manifestation of God's love. Let me read it for you. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 6 says we were powerless and ungodly. To be powerless means we can't change our basic nature. Nature And ungodly means we have no desire to change in the first place. No more hopeless situation could ever have been imagined. Ungodly. Powerless. Sinners. It's not a very impressive list, is it? But those three words describe what you were by nature from the moment you were born. They also describe the spiritual state of every person in the world apart from Jesus. This is God's judgment on the entire human race. No one is excluded. Search the four corners of the globe and you find no exceptions to the truth. Not only are all men sinners, but all men by nature are powerless, ungodly, and the enemies of God. And may I say that it doesn't matter whether you accept this as truth or not. These words, these things are true without regard to your personal opinion. You may say, I'm not ungodly, or I'm not God's enemy, or even I know lots of people who are worse sinners than me. But God's word simply washes away our limp excuses and our limp objections. This is the truth about you as you stand on your own before God, apart from divine grace. This truth leaves us with no hope in and of ourselves. You might somehow reverse one or two of these facts, but no one can escape all four. As a result, you are utterly unable to save yourself. Your condition is hopeless apart from Jesus Christ. We may therefore draw one major conclusion from all this, and it's an uncomfortable one. There is nothing in us that forces God to love us. Sin has infected our lives so completely, it has distorted and destroyed even the parts of us that we believe are beautiful. Sin ugly flies everything It touches. Sin has made us so ugly that God finds nothing in us that forces him to love us. There is then no reason for God to love us. No reason except for this. That it's the kind of God he is. He loves you and he loves me because God is love. And he can't help loving us even when we were his enemies. His love is both greater than our sin and it is in spite of our sin. God shouldn't love us, but he does. This is the wonder of the ages, that God would love his sworn enemies. I'm going to pause to interject an important point. You know, someone might find this truth very discouraging because we all like to think of ourselves as naturally lovable people. I don't know about you, but I definitely would like to think that I'm a lovable person. The truth is, is that If God loves you only when you are lovable, then when you stop being lovable, God would have to stop loving you. Where would you be then? No, it's better to admit the truth, that God loves us in spite of our unloveliness. That means that God's love is sure and certain because it doesn't depend on anything you say or do. Excuse me. Because of Christ's sacrifice, our sin is paid for. Accepting God's gift of grace removes the sin that separates us from God. So now, intimacy with God becomes a possibility. The kind of glory that could kill a man, as in the case of Uzziah, can now dwell within you. Moment to moment, we can live within the comfort of God's love. Moment to moment, within the power of his love. 
Romans 8, 31, 35, and 37 through 39 states. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any power, nothing nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now today, you could be watching this and since the moment we started talking, since the moment we started singing, you knew that God has been speaking to your heart that you need his presence in your life, that you need his intimacy with him, that you need his love. And the only way we can get that is when we surrender our lives to him and we accept his gift of mercy and grace through Jesus who died on the cross for your sin. If today is the day that you want to accept that, in a moment we're going to pray and I'd like you to pray with us. If today you're, you're watching and you know you've, you've been a follower of Christ for a long time, but <clears throat> intimacy with God is something that's kind of eluded you. Maybe it's because there's sin in your life that you haven't surrendered to God yet. And tonight, he wants to take that from you. He wants to set you free. He wants to take you to another level of intimacy with him. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and pray together. And when we do that, tonight is your moment. Let's go ahead and pray. <clears throat> Father God, I just thank you so much that we can be here with you. That because of your son, we can have intimacy with you. We can know your love personally and intimately. And if tonight, for those people who are watching who need to accept your, your gift of grace into their lives, we thank you for bringing them here. And I want to just pray with them right now, Lord, that we surrender surrender our lives to you and we ask you to forgive us for the sins that we have caused you the sin that has separated us from you the sin that has hurt us hurt you and hurt others we ask for your forgiveness and your mercy and we thank you that because of your grace we can now have relationship with you father god take my life and use it for your glory and for those tonight lord god who have <clears throat> want more intimacy with you. They know you, and they've known you for a long time, but they want to get closer to you. But there are things that have stood in their way, Father. I pray that you would break those chains right now, Father, that they would surrender those things to you. We, we hold them with open hands before you, and we ask, God, that you would take them. You would continue to rule our lives, and that you'd give us the strength that is needed to overcome these things, that we would have character like Jesus. We love you, Father God, and we, we want to follow you, and we want to bless you. Thank you so much for, this, for tonight, for the time we've been able to spend together.
promise comes my way when I feel your hand of grace rest upon me staying just before you God staying humbled at your feet I will lift these hands of grace I will believe I remind myself of all that you've done and the life I have because of your son love King dream about. It is so exciting to us, but more importantly, all of the angels in heaven are rejoicing. That's what the Bible says. So I welcome you to the family, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Kimo or I. Uh, if you prayed that second prayer as well, and you know that there are things in your life that you're just struggling with getting over, and that you know are keeping you from intimacy with God, again, contact us through email or through Facebook, or you can come uh, come to our website, www.nextgennh.com, and uh, you can connect to us through there. Thank you so much, and God bless. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. I am yours. I am forever yours. Mountain.